guys welcome back into this um, next video um, I started to um, like to do videos about um, airplane basically about my work and explaining stuff to you guys so um, I was going through some uh, aviation articles like uh, kind of funny ones and I um, and I stepped on the airplane etiquette so um, in today's video I'll be telling you um, some of the stuff, um, how to behave as a passenger maybe, uh, how you should behave as a passenger, what you should um, do, what you sh shouldn't do, what you should do. Uh, I know I did a similar video about the um, passengers asking questions, this one will be um, a bit different just because I will be telling you what you shouldn't do, what you are doing probably, uh, but what you shouldn't do. So let's start with the, um, I'll be telling like uh, um, key words and then explaining um, what you're doing wrong and what I advise you to do instead. So first word we have aisle, which is basically the, uh, you know, aisle, which where you are walking um, through the airplane to sit on your seat basically. Um, so in our airplanes, which is Boeing 737, there is just one main aisle and basically um, we are doing everything there, which is um, doing the service, uh, doing the safety demonstrations uh, and stuff like this. But what passengers are doing wrong or shouldn't they do it, they uh, let their children play. Um, Basically, they they sat the children, the child down, and they are playing in the basically in the aisle um, during the flight, which shouldn't be like this. This is not a playing area. I know, um, especially when we are having those longer flights, that it's hard to go like five hours straight with a child. I know that, but uh, unfortunately, the uh, aisle is not a playing area. We are we are when we are doing service. The trolleys are passing via there, and um, it's very hard when you have even passengers. Not talking about children uh, uh, only, but about passengers as well, standing there, uh, chatting to each other. If they are seated at different rows, they are coming up to each other, even if they are seeing us passing with the trolley. Um, uh, they they just stand and stand there, and then we just have to constantly excuse me excuse me excuse me and it's sometimes annoying especially when yeah, we are busy and we have to go up and down we have to go back to our galley to do some to take some stuff to take ice or something um and i have this kind of situations very often when i'm very busy uh, and i'm the one the person uh, who goes to the galley to take some more additional stuff and the people are just standing there or queuing to the toilets which shouldn't be the case now um but uh, before everything uh, happened in the world uh, people used to queue and it also was bothering with uh, our service maybe with the bigger airplanes like uh, 747 or something like this there's more more th um, than one aisle so then there's more space probably but in our Boeing small Boeing 737 there is not enough aisle so another thing is a uh, baggage um, or luggage wherever you prefer um, to call it um, there are always uh, issues with the luggage always it's just I don't remember a flight where there's no where there was no um, issue with the luggage even right now um, when we are in those unpredictable times and even the person the the cabin the flight is not full um, I had the um, very recent well last time I was flying was two months ago but kind of recent event where a passenger I don't know if I told you that I, I don't think so passenger um, she was not a native English speaking so uh, just started with that um, and there might be some uh, miscommunication between uh, non-English speakers and stuff like this so apparently this passenger um, bought an additional luggage was which was an instrument and it was a piano um, I think piano uh, you know how piano is big and heavy and she said that she bought an additional ticket which means that she can bring it um, as a as a baggage as her luggage and um, we were thinking because piano is a big instrument like people are coming on board with guitar and it's fine or um, cello 
and stuff like this. This kind of instruments which are possible to, to bring in physically. But this piano was so big that she uh, told us that the security people at the security told her that um, they will bring it to the aircraft because it was such a big instrument. And we were thinking how possible that she bought like an extra seat so she can put it on the seat, but it was impossible. Um, so it was miscommunication uh, with the uh, customer service people. Of course, all the blame went on us, but uh, you know, that's not the um, movie about it. Uh, let's uh, discuss the luggage issues. Um, there's uh, always issues, as I said before, and especially at the overwing exits, where the, this luggage should not be present uh, when, um, during the um, takeoff and during the landing. There shouldn't be lag luggage any luggage at the overwing exits and as a number three in uh, my company I used to be number three a lot so I used to stand in the middle of the of an aisle next to the emergency exits to instruct people to not to put their luggages even smallest uh, bags they all have to go um, to the to the luggage area for takeoff and landing and how many times I was arguing guys it's it's incredible even though it says on the seat that it's it is a legal requirement it's not my seat requirement in my head it's just a requirement by law by the um, European uh, agency from the European flying agency whatever it's called uh, so you know so some people don't treat um, I know that airplane means, ho means holidays, means relax, means fun, but sometimes there are certain rules that I did not make up. Like I was, you know, I went via through a six week training to learn that. So um, if there's some event happening, you will be able to get off an airplane, you know, um, with, uh, you know, normally without any uh, any bugs next to your legs which will m make it impossible to get out of the aircraft so this is you know this is not our imagination making those rules up it's just the rules written by the European agencies the legal agencies which make up those rules which actually makes sense because d uh, during evacuation like you wouldn't like to uh, have a bag next to you like a big luggage because some people I saw multiple examples of people putting luggage um, at the overwing exit, but it's not only overwing exit, guys, it's also the um, seats. For example, you are seated in the middle or by the window and um, next to the aisle, the seat next to the aisle, you put your luggage, even backpack. No, you cannot put it, you have to put it under the seat. So in case there is an evacuation, you can just freely go, go out of the... Um, of the of the airplane sorry guys if you hear any vibrations here but my phone is going crazy today and next thing after the luggage situations we have a call bell situation you know call bells the one where uh, it's just in the panel above your head if you need something very important almost an emergency you shouldn't well, we say you shouldn't. You should only press it in a real emergency. Although now um, we say to the passengers via our PA system that they can use the um, call bell in order to um, reserve their queue to the toilet because um, you know that right now uh, there shouldn't be queuing to the toilets, so passengers should press the call bell. But sometimes. Um, Passengers um, overuse this call bell, especially when it's a busy, busy flight. I used to have those busy flights. I actually miss them now, um, especially Germany, UK flights, Germany to UK. It was always a party, those flights, and the call bell overusage was like the, the amount of the call bells, uh, which was just asking for beer or for something to eat. It was like too much it was too much we were busy already with other customers and um the other people who already finished their beer because we served them first they already wanted another one so it's kind of over usage in my opinion because you should wait if you see that we are busy you should wait even though i know you are having fun you are going uh, for, on holidays you're having a party you should wait and you should respect us you shouldn't um Treat, treat us like waitresses, um, although uh, this is a, a common name for our um, job, uh, like a waitress in the sky, but in um, 
actual dangerous situation we will save your life probably so um you know just this call bell please treat it as something emergency emergency or something important but sometimes there are exceptional situations where we actually make a um, PA announcement to the passengers that we are landing in half an hour and there's an airplane actually landing we are landing in half an hour from now if you like something from the bar don't hesitate to press the call bell and this is when we actually let you know if you uh, would like to order something you can press this call bell but it doesn't mean that you can press it always then uh, I think I already said it in uh, one of the previous videos about disembarking the aircraft that you shouldn't stand up that I just mentioned here again because it's such an important feature no standing before seatbelt sign is off or even where when we are airborne and the seatbelt sign is on it is on for a reason so please stay seated um, have your uh, fat seat belts fastened and if there's a real emergency just press a call bell above your head just don't stand up because there might be turbulences coming up but we usually let you know when the turbulence coming up uh, earphones uh, people uh, having earphones um, in the critical stages of the flights I would not recommend that also um, about uh, when the, we are doing safety demonstration you should not have your earphones as the and this is what actually the safety demonstration says please uh, I don't remember now I didn't fly a lot as you know but there's some mention about uh, taking off your e earphones and sometimes we are actually showing that and people actually with the headphones on watching me and I actually show it and they are looking at me like with the earphones still on and sometimes um, we used to uh, stop safety demonstration and we used to go individually to each passenger to say um, please take off those headphones because it's not only for you the safety demonstration but it's also uh, you know it's um, for the people around you as well so if there's an emergency you, it's not only you in this air air airplane there's also another 188 passengers and uh, shortly 198 because there will be um Boeing Max so um yeah it's this the when we ask you to take off the headphones it's not only for yourself but for the safety uh of other people who are around you um the next uh, thing um which I would like to tell you guys about our galley which is like kitchen kind of you know the back and the front of the plane where we have our um trolleys and stuff like this and sometimes when we finish service, when we serve the, our lovely customers, after that we are going to our galley, usually it's a back galley, um, to uh, have a chat, to eat our lunch or dinner. And um, the airplane etiquette says when you see that crew is there and seated resting, don't come up to us. Unless it's an emergency and you can use your call bell, also, sometimes it's uh, very um, frustrating. We are in the middle of our lunch and there is a call bell because someone wants another beer. I mean, okay, we understand that, but sometimes it's just irritating. You know, guys, I'm not telling you that because you cannot do it. I'm just like kind of laughing um, about this um, galley situation. You can, you can certainly come up uh, to us and ask for stuff. I'm just saying that uh, crew finds it annoying when uh, we are seated eating and um, there are people coming up or just people coming up to s uh, straighten up their legs because it's a five hour flight so their legs just uh, you know hurting and they have to stand up and walk a bit and sometimes they just come to galley and just stare at us they don't even talk they just look at you while you're eating and this is not comfortable so if you are one of them if you are one of those passengers doing that do not do that uh, go somewhere else go into the middle of the aisle but not to the galley while we're eating and now another uh, thing is about masks and I'm not talking about those masks that we are wearing because of the situation happening in the world right now but I'm talking about the um, oxygen masks and I saw so many pictures going around the internet from um, because those oxygen masks fall out when the aircraft goes into the, the compression and uh, we actually need air additional air um, so the oxygen masks 
drop down but again i saw so many pictures going around the internet with passengers keeping their masks like this it's a round mask if you didn't see i will insert a picture here it's a mask which is like more or less this kind of this size and i saw people putting it like this but you don't do anything by putting it like this to have actually a full inhalation of oxygen to to help it you have to put it like this over your mouth and nose um, simple because if you put like this it's just uh, I mean it doesn't do anything you have to put it uh, over your uh, nose and mouth to actually have a full inhalation and to actually get a help because I know uh, you will be probably panicking because you would ne you will ne you've never been in this kind of situation uh, and you would probably look around uh, at other people how do they put it some people put like this and you autom automatically go like this and also you see uh, we are showing it uh, during the safety demonstration so if you are not paying attention you will probably be the one who will not survive the decompression not just uh, kidding but keep it in mind that you know listening to us during the safety demonstration taking off your headphones and looking actually not just uh, because I was here before I was flying 50 times it's not an explanation and now actually our safety demonstration has changed so now if you if someone tells me I was flying 50 times or I'm flying more than you then um, you are wrong because sometimes they are changes and actually right now the safety demo has changed for our company so yeah just to let you know sometimes the rules are changing another thing is a pa which is a public announcement uh, when i'm speaking via this phone uh, as you might see if you've flown uh, before any airline any airlines any airplane um listen when i speak just simple sentence i will tell you that because some people um i'm not telling you to listen to our um drink and snacks uh, public announcement you don't have to listen to that but when i speak you should um close your mouth basically because it disturbs me sometimes i have to focus what i'm saying now nowadays we are doing those important uh, public announcements about um self-isolation and stuff like this uh, so it's worth that you will listen to me and do not speak uh, while I'm talking sometimes I also um, after I spoke there were some call bells and once I received the call bell after my public announcement um, PA basically and I went to the seat uh, where the passenger pressed the call bell and they told me you are too loud and my child is sleeping or you are too loud and I have a headache Mm, well, what can I say? I was born with this, well born, maybe not born, but uh, uh, I don't know if you know guys, maybe not, I'm a singer as well. So, um, singers basically have loud voice because we have to, we have to be loud when we are singing basically. And I cannot change anything about it, basically, it's just my voice, this is how I trained, unfortunately, and I cannot um, change it. Uh, like this is my voice, this is the tone I'm speaking and you just have to be fine with that. It's just, you know, you will be here with me in this airplane for three hours and then we will not probably see each other again. So please respect that and don't comment of the tone or how loud am I because it is annoying. I'm just trying to do my job and um, yeah, just, um, just it, this kind of uh, comments uh, are not uh, very welcome. So yeah just to let you know another thing is standing behind um, a crew so basically um, when we are doing service for example and it's busy service and you would like to pass to the toilet um, when I'm busy unfortunately sorry well, you will have to wait because I will not let you pass and uh, standing behind me will not change it because there has been so many situations when passengers stand behind me and just I'm I'm just feeling their breath behind me basically and they see that I'm actually busy and and my head is somewhere else like I'm trying to serve Pepsi here water here here sandwich so I'm actually not able to let you pass because sometimes in our Boeing sentry sense we have to go back all the way back or all the way um, forward the plane to let you go to the toilet so uh, sometimes just please sit down and wait those two three minutes uh, when I pass and then you will be able to go to the toilet 
Um, yeah, another thing is uh, about safety demo and about something might have changed in the rules of the company, it's undivided attention. So uh, sometimes we are asking before we start a safety demonstration, may we have your full and undivided attention while we point out some of the safety features on this Boeing 800 series aircraft. Now I, I'll be, I will start uh, telling you all the P's guys, but that's not the point of this video. So undivided attention, this is what we've spoken before a few minutes ago just uh, give us this attention undivided i will underline it here undivided attention just for those few minutes usually it's uh, two to five minutes attention while we are doing something important and again i'm not saying you will ha you have to listen to my drink and snacks pa but to those most important pas while i'm doing pa about the um, the rules now when we enter the country each country now have different rules so sometimes we must do those uh, public announcements about the rules uh, about self-isolation stuff like this about safety demo there is must some there something must have changed the airplane now we are coming up with the new airplane uh boeing uh, max so uh it will be kind of similar to the previous one but uh, a bit different the rules will be a bit different so you must listen to those rules and just uh put an undivided attention for just a few minutes because something might have changed and you might not realize you maybe will not realize that you're flying on boeing max and that's the thing that something might have changed even though you've flown 50 times and you told me that and sometimes passengers are so annoying because i'm trying to tell them um about the emergency exit how to behave what to do what not to do and they are like uh, actually repeating the words after me and they are like i know i know but i still have to tell you that because this is the requirement by the agencies by the legal agencies i might have some agents seated next to you and not even know and if i don't say that I will I might get fired because this is a safety related issue so please guys just listen I think this video is about based um, on one word listen just listen to us follow the rules it's not that hard so this guys was the airplane etiquette I hope you like this airplane etiquette and now you will be more um, you will have more culture um, while traveling um, so I hope you enjoyed this video please uh, leave like subscribe if you didn't subscribe yet and you can now leave comments finally so if you like to share anything any any stories from the airplane or any questions please drop them down below and I will see you guys in the next video bye guys